Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When you Google something, you're actually only searching like 4% of the internet. The other 96% is what's called the, the deep web. Um, some of it's some, some technical communication stuff. Some of it's military things. But, but some of that is, is what's called the dark web. And it's called dark for a good reason. Because on there, you can find for sale stolen credit card numbers, illegal substances, illegal gambling, human trafficking, killers for hire. It, reading about it sends shivers down your spine. When God talks about the darkness in our world, he talks about someone in it. Uh, an enemy, enemy who is both invisible and also evil. And, and we are in a struggle against this darkness. We don't want to enter into this battle unprepared, not knowing who we're facing against. So God gives us this. He tells us about who we're going to face. He gives us a, a reconnaissance report. We are facing against a, a, a ruler of darkness. If a thug jumps you in the street or, or someone breaks into your house, you, you can try and fight them off, right? You can use whatever is at your disposal. You can wrestle to the gra them to the ground and hit them. But Paul has chilling words for us this evening. In Ephesians chapter 6, he writes, Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This is a dangerous enemy. We're not talking about you know, fictitious ghosts or, or, or something. We're talking about the devil and his evil angels, those angels who rebelled against God and fell away from him. They are very real and very evil. And there should not be anything fascinating or, or attractive or funny about them. In fact, the very name Satan means enemy. Paul's reference to, to rulers and authorities gives us the, this picture of them being organized like a military. They've, they've got leaders and soldiers, and at the top, at the head, is their chief ruler, their general, Satan himself. The demons bring darkness with them. Spiritual darkness that they use to try and smother our faith like, like one of those fire blankets that, that you use to put out and smother a fire. That is the goal of all demons. To put an end to faith on this earth. They want to steal your faith from you and they want to keep unbelievers from ever hearing about the grace of God in the first place. That's what, that's what being spiritually dead is being separated from God, being an enemy of God, hating God, having no faith or love for God. And that is what Satan wants for us. He is actively waged war on us. He wants us to be dead, our soul to be dead, so that we will be dead eternally. And that's not all. God's reconnaissance report goes on, and Peter, we hear how our enemy... The devil prowls around like a roaring lion. The darkness does not just sit there. It's not like the, the darkness in the corner of your bedroom. You turn on the light and it, it goes away. It, it prowls around. The lions prowl around looking for prey, and Satan does the same thing. So if we have friends and family members who have been caught in this darkness. We want to get serious about this battle. We want to pray for them. We want to bring up conversations about the hope we have in Christ. And we want to pray for ourselves too because we are in the middle of this fight. And we are in the middle of a fight with a liar. Jesus tells the, the people who it really is behind their plot to arrest them. Who's the one who's really pulling the strings? He says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. 
He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. If you speak English, we all speak English here. If you speak French or German and, and that's your native language, that means that you, you speak that every day. Maybe you even think and dream in that language. Satan's nav- native language is lying. He lies every day. In fact, s- Satan, or the devil, means slanderer. It means one who brings uh, an accusation in hostility. He is angry and jealous of what God has done for us in Christ. But he works extra hard on us to get us to doubt God's word. It's one of the reasons that, that study of the Bible, personal study and study in class is so important. And Satan has two favorite lies that he just loves to use. Two opposite but very similarly effective lies. One is that you're pretty good. God would never damn you to hell. And the other is the exact opposite. You are so bad that God would never want to save you. Lies. All completely false. He he wants you to think that God doesn't care about you. That God is not fair. That, 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 that God is mean and lo- unloving. He wants you to hate God and to reject God's word and to reject God's promises. And then you will be like him totally spiritually dead. Seems like a pretty bleak reconnaissance report, doesn't it? But that, that's not where it ends. Because this is why the Son of God had to go forth to war. Our reconnaissance report goes on to show that the hope that we have in Jesus because God put a light in the darkness. We turn the candle or we turn the lights on. We, we light the candles for worship here to help us see. The light always drives away the darkness. Even even a small candle lit inside the, the deepest of darkest of caves will drive that darkness away. And there's a more important light in here than, than the ones above us. A light that that drives the darkness that Satan is trying to shove into our hearts away. Uh, A light that has given us hope and faith and a future in heaven. A light that is so bright that the Bible describes heaven as a place where we will never even need the sun and moon for eternity. John is talking about Jesus when he says, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Did you catch the the battle in that verse? The darkness has not overcome it. Satan and Jesus fought many times on this earth. Most of the time, Jesus used God's word to drive him away. Sometimes he used miracles to to drive Satan and his followers and the the damage and illness and death he had done away. But in the final battle, they both used the same weapon. They both fought each other with the cross. And Satan thought he had Jesus when, when Jesus died on that cross, but you and I both know that that was Jesus' ultimate weapon. Jesus died on the cross and put an end Finally, to to the darkness forever. To Satan forever. Jesus has overcome and broken the darkness. And the darkness cannot stand up to him. You and I have been given a a wonderful gift of faith. Uh, Through faith, we see Jesus for for who he really is. The savior of the world who brings forgiveness and, and eternal life. John says, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. I can't see anything in the dark. Walking in the dark, I I need a flashlight or I'll, I'll stumble into things and stub my toe. It's so much worse in spiritual darkness. No, there is only one flashlight that can provide light in that darkness, and that is Jesus He is life. He is the source of all light. 
and life. Louis Armstrong sang, I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom from me to you, and you for me and you, something like that. It's a wonderful world. And, and, and that sight, that, the things that we see, that's amazing. But that is nothing compared to going from spiritual blindness to spiritual sight in Jesus. It means that we can see ourselves for who we are. We can see the mess in our life for what it is. We can see the sin and the damage it causes ourselves and others. It means that we can confess it freely to our Lord and trust him to forgive us for every single last evil thought and word and deed because we trust in him. Because we trust in Jesus. He is the light. He is the life. And he paid for us with his own life. He has shown us what greatness is. He has opened our eyes. And in him we see a, a grand purpose in life. We, a, a purpose of living in gratitude and grace. A purpose of being the best that we can be for him, to live not in glory for ourselves, but to him, to see our family members as, as precious blood-bought souls whose spiritual life is important because we want to be with them for eternity. And so we do what we can to share Jesus with them and to make sure that Jesus is the most important thing in, in our life and in their life. We look at unbelievers not with, with anger or disgust, but, but sadness. With, with a great desire to do all we can to, to bring this light to them, to help them see. We look at this, this work as, as a means of giving God, God glory. We look at each other as, as dear fellow family believers, special friends in, in Jesus who we, we pray for and love because we matter to each other. Because of Jesus, we can see through all the darkness of death into eternity. We can see a real place alongside millions of other believers at the right hand of God, filled with so much wonder and glory and beauty and joy and action that, that we cannot imagine it. It's far beyond our, our wildest dreams. Praise the one who breaks the darkness. Amen. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.